John O. Every, Bloomville, New York. And what is your birthday? 520-31. And where were you born? Bloomville, New York. You born there and you still live there? I still live there, yes. Oh. And I'm from Syracuse, so it's so good to see the, the person from central New York. <laughs> yes. And tell me about your family when you were growing up, your parents and your siblings. I had uh, one brother mm -hmm. and three sisters. My mother and my father both worked very hard all their lives. Uh, my father worked in a creamery. And my mother, she was, well, she used to take care of elderly people. Mm. And anyway, I didn't quite finish school because I had fell, hurt my shoulder playing baseball. Oh and split my finger playing baseball. And then when I was 17, I enlisted in the Marines. And I went to Paris Island, South Carolina for the... So you joined the Marine? Yes. In 17? <laughs> yes, I did. And so you have to have um, Parents' permission, right? Signatures. <laughs> yes. Did you get it or not? I, I, I got it. Oh, you got Be it. Begrudgingly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so your parents didn't like it? Uh, yeah, my parents, they thought, well, that would be a good place for me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so you went to Paris Island for? Recruit training. Basic training. Basic training, yes. And how was it? It was tough. Tough. <laughs> uh, we got up in the morning at 5 o'clock, and we weren't allowed to get back on the boats until 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> <laughs> and it, 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 was, it was tough, but it, it was a very good training. For 17-year-old, this yes. must have been very tough, right? Yes, it was. Right. From basic, where, where did you go? To Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Uh -huh. And what did you do there? I was put into H&S Company, 37 millimeter anti-tank platoon. H&S Company? 8th Marines. Uh -huh. And 37 millimeter anti-tank platoon. Uh -huh. And the, what was your uh, MOS? I don't remember what my, what the number was. Uh, yeah, but what did you do actually? I, well, I guess I was a assistant gunner on the, uh, on the gun. And then we went to Viegas for warm weather operations. Oh. Then we come back to Camp Lejeune, and I was in uh, the 6th Marines, or the 8th Marines, I'm sorry. And then we went in August 49, we went to Labrador for cold weather operations. Mm. And March 1950, I was in a machine gun platoon. I had been in the 9th Marines when the, they came back from China. And then, uh, well, I went into the 6th Marines and into a, in a mortar platoon, and I was a mortar gunner. 
So yeah. you've been changing all this. Pardon? From you were originally eighth, and then you went to Let six. Me see. From the eighth, I went to the ninth. Yeah. And then the ninth to the sixth. <laughs> and. Did you, you know? Did you know anything about Korea around that no, time? No, I, I never heard anything about Korea at that time. Uh, then we went to the Medi on a Mediterranean cruise, and we were just going to different ports and going on liberty and meeting people. And when the Korean War broke out. We got orders we was going to stay in the Mediterranean for five more months. Well, we was quite a happy bunch of boys because all we was doing was going on liberty. Mm. But the next day, we got orders we was going outside the Mediterranean area. And we knew exactly about where it was because the Korean War had broke out. And we went through down through the Suez Canal over into Japan. From Luzon? Pardon? From Luzon? Yes. So from Luzon? The from the Mediterranean, right through the Suez Canal. Over oh, from the Mediterranean? Yes. Okay. And the uh, Red Sea over into Japan. Mm. And then we got reorganized and uh, weapons company, 3rd Battalion, 7th Marines. Mm-hmm. And in September, we made the amphibious landing at Incheon. So you were at the Incheon landing? Pardon? You were at the Incheon landing? Yes. September 15 or 16? 16. 16. Yeah. And how was it? Well, it, we didn't have any very little resistance. Mm -hmm. And we made the landing, and then we got on a, a a train, and I don't remember just where it was that we went to. It was a short distance, but uh, then everything was going good for us, and we advanced on up through to the 38th parallel without too much resistance. But did you went into Seoul? Now, I was on the outskirts of Seoul. Gimpo? Yongdungpo? Yeah. Yongdungpo? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you didn't go to Seoul? No. So from Yongdungpo you went up to 38 parallel? Yes. Do you remember where? No, I don't. Because, uh, well, we weren't told any of the names of the places, but uh, then uh, it, we, after the 38th parallel, we came back down to uh, Incheon, got aboard ship, and went around the coast, on the other coast, to Wonsan, mm. and made the amphibious landing there, and we had worked on our way up to, uh, towards the Chosen R Reservoir, mm. and November, Thanksgiving, November, well. <laughs> 23, 23rd. You had a Thanksgiving dinner on November 23rd. Yeah, yeah. okay. I had a turkey leg. <laughs> where was it? I'm not sure where that was either, but uh, I had a turkey leg and a slice of bread. And the slice of bread was delicious because it was the first one we'd had. <laughs> <laughs> Not frozen. No, no, no. It actually had a little warmth in it because they brought it up in, in the ovens and passed it out. But you were at. Uh, you don't remember where you were at the Changjin Reservoir, Hada Hagaluri or Godori, anything. We was above. Let me see. So you went up to all the way up to Hagal Uri and then Udamni. Yes. And what happened? Uh, our resistance was getting heavier, and 
November 27th, it was very heavy, and I being a mortar gunner, uh, I could see tracer bullets coming at me, mm -hmm. and artillery was coming over, and anyway, I was in a squatting position, and I got froze frostbite, both hands and both feet, uh, because I, I couldn't move. I squatted down firing my mortar, and I didn't realize just how cold my feet was. Mm. Uh, but then I, uh, the following, two days later, took my boots off, and there was particles of ice between my toes. Oh. And anyway, then we was, I could see the airplane or the airplanes dropping supplies to us. And then we started working our way back down through. And we would set up our mortars and fire whenever they was needed, which was most of the time. Uh, but then uh, the, our platoon leader, Lieutenant Karadakis, he told me, set, had the medic look at me, and they said, well, we're going to evacuate you. So anyway, they, I, I was on a walking alongside of a, a Jeep trailer that had a, a boy was on it that had been shot and he'd in the leg and he said I would be better off dead. I said, geez, don't, don't talk like that. And within 12 hours, he was dead. Mm. And it was, <laughs> and, but uh, then I got back down through to uh, Hagaru, and they evacuated me from Korea. And what happened? You were wounded. I just frost, frost, frostbite. Yeah, mm. both hands, both feet. So and you were evacuated from Hagaluri to where? Uh, Japan. And how long did you stay there? Uh, I was in uh, Japan makeshift hospital for uh, through th three days. Mm -hmm. Then they flew me from there to Vallejo, California, and I was in a kind of a, a hospital there, and I spent three nights there. And then from there, I went to St. Uh, Albans Naval Hospital in Long Island, and then uh, my my brother was also in the army, and he saw my company the day they got evacuated from Korea, and he was looking for me, and he went up, and this one guy was laying on the rest him and he nudged him with his foot and he says where's every the boy looked up at him every's gone my brother said gone gone where and the boy told him that i had been evacuated and he said out of the 90 97 men there was only seven or eight of them left and because everybody else had been shot or, or, yeah, killed, or frostbite so bad they couldn't walk. So that frostbite must be very severe, right? Yes. Sir. Otherwise you could no, evacuate it, it right? It, it was severe. There are many people, many soldiers got actually frostbite, but you, your case seems to be, seemed to be very severe. Yes. <laughs> uh, you couldn't walk. I could walk, yeah, but 
more or less hobbling. But uh, when my toes, both both feet turned a real dark, almost a black, mm. and my fingertips the same way. They were going to t take three toes off on my right foot, but they decided to leave them on as long as I didn't get gangrene in them uh -huh. to help me keep my balance. So as of right now, I can't bend my toes. I have very little feeling in them. Oh. And when I drop something, I'm, I have a terrible job picking it up because I, I don't have that much feeling in the tips of my fingers. And you, so you don't feel that much about there. Yeah. So that's how you ended your Zhang Jin battle career. Yes, it is. Um, have you been back to Korea? Yes, I went back to Korea three years ago, I think it was, run a revisit. It was... Tell me about that experience. It, it was nice. We landed at Incheon, and uh, they, uh, they met us, and one of the Korean boys from the hotel <laughs> grabbed my suitcase, and I didn't know where, <laughs> and he put it on the wagons to take it to the hotel, and we got to the hotel, and we was greeted, and uh, and we got the. It was beautiful, <laughs> and they uh, uh, I forgot what the name of the hotel was. Uh huh. But the ambassador. Green, the Lotte ambassador. Uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever. Uh, and but uh, the Korean government would give us that, that uh, medal. Medal. And then they took us up to the 38th parallel, the Pamela and John, and I stuck one foot over into North Korea again. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it it was it was marvelous trip. And when we got back down through, uh, they took us. To, they had a show for us, two shows for us. And the the Korean people were just marvelous. Come out of your service, but this war has been known as forgotten. Yes, and uh, and I was in a Memorial Day parade two years ago. And the Korean War was never mentioned. And we, well, that, this was a, the third, we prayed the three villages. And uh, the two first two villages, they were mentioned. But the fourth, or the third village, the guest speaker never mentioned the Korean War. Uh, World War One, World War Two, and Vietnam, but, you know, <laughs> but not Korea. And this past year, well, the, this past Memorial Day, in uh, the parade, the guest speaker at the second uh, village, the only war she mentioned was Vietnam. <laughs> That's the reality, isn't it? Yeah. What do you think about that? I, I think it I think it's terrible because uh, the Korean War we had so many people that lost their lives and uh, the Korean people also and I I just feel so good to be honored to have been part of the Korean War to save the South Korean people. It, it, oh, it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So that's why we are doing this. 
the oh. history textbook has only one paragraph co coverage in average. Oh boy. And it's so dry so that I don't expect our students to learn much about Korean War from one paragraph. It's all about MacArthur, MacArthur, and you know. <laughs> yes. And they say it's a forgotten or it's still, you know, stalemate. And now this uh, monument in Chronicle, Virginia, there was, I think it was in Minnesota, that uh, one of the officers in the the chosen few uh, was bound and determined that we put all our money into the scholarship fund. And I didn't agree with that at all because I think that uh, it would be better if some of the money went into the monument for the future generations because with the uh, the scholarship fund, so it's going to benefit one piece, one person. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, it's also going to be get, forget the forgotten war. So unless we have a um, sort of systematic way to educate our younger generations with the scholarship, as you mentioned, that will be just for just one person. Exactly. And Korean government donated three hundred thousand dollars for the chosen uh, Changjin Battle Monument in Guarico, Virginia. Yes, I. Yeah. And yes. And other Korean organization donated two hundred thousand dollars. Altogether, it's a five hundred thousand dollars. Yes, and I, I have also sent a, well, a donation for it. So that's why. We want to invite, our, my foundation invites, have an annual conference for social and history teachers conference. We had uh, about 90 teachers from 25 states in Orlando, Florida this year. And we talk about the Korean War and we show these films and they were really fascinated by the outcome and we took 10 teachers back to Korea with the Korean War veterans. Oh. And they were amazed, amazed by this. And they were saying to themselves that, why didn't we teach more about this you know, successful outcome? Republic of Korea, 11th largest economy, one of the most dynamic economy, strong ally to the United States. And I, I personally am so grateful for, to the Korean government for pay the airfare, and invite me back to Korea. Yeah. It, <laughs> it was a great experience. Uh, and I'm so proud to have been part of the Korean War. So let's go a little bit, go back, uh, go back a little bit more about your um, experience in, your combat experience in how, how Yudam Ni, how was how severe was it? Do you still remember those? Do you still I, see the Chinese soldiers coming I, at I you? I didn't actually see. I, I heard them, but I didn't actually see any of the, mm. the Chinese soldiers. Mm -hmm. But uh, I remember seeing some of them that had been hit, that had just a, just, I don't know what they call them, tennis shoes on. And I, I was so surprised because I, I couldn't understand how they was keeping their feet warm. <laughs> but uh, why you didn't see any real boots? I just when uh, the real bullets coming at me, the tracers I could see them coming, and <laughs> I had one of them hit right in beside me. And one of them, one bullet hit my, the base plate mm. off from the, the gun. Oh. And I could hear some of the small arms go, going overhead. But, uh, 
Well, being young, I guess uh, I wasn't that awfully concerned because I just kept firing, firing my gun, and I was awarded uh, a medal, commendation medal, mm -hmm. for because some of the ammunition I had to service it myself before I dropped it into the the barrel. The mortar, 81 mortars, came in three pieces, the base plate, the tube, and the bipod, which I carried, and it had the sight on, and we had aiming sticks, and it, it was, <sighs> we just couldn't concentrate on, you know, anything, but, uh, we had to, some of the shells land not too far from our position. And I wasn't actually up on the front because I was back maybe three, four hundred feet or two hundred feet with my with my gun. And it, it was it was <laughs> unbelievable though. So looking at all those, thinking about all these years, 65 years ago, you served there, and now Korea is one of the most successful country in the world. What do you think is the legacy of your service? I, I think that the, we, the United States, considers the the Korean government, one of the, a, a really friendly nations, put it that way. Uh, I, because like I said before, I'm just so proud to think that uh, we, could save the, the Chinese or the Korean people from the communist communism. Mm -hmm. So I I I don't know. I just get <laughs> feel so honored, you know. And when I when I go to these chosen few meetings. It's just so nice to see the Korean people, and in our local post, which which uh, has uh, the meeting is in Albany, New York. We we have Chinese or the Korean people coming to them once in a while, they and they come to our dinner, and the Korean people have a picnic. They invite us to it, and it it's just so <laughs> marvelous. Mm. To, I think that is the legacy of also that uh, U.S. and Korea so become friend friendly to each other, becomes friends. Yes. Yeah, and you feel that, right? Yes, I do. John, I want to thank you for your service, okay. for the fights for the nation, oh, so that you. we were able to build our nation again. Yeah. And um, thank you for sharing your story. Your frostbite, still you don't feel a thing there in your toes and I hope that you can continue to maintain your health oh, you look you. you look marvelous now thank and you. and and thank you so much again you're you're welcome mm. any sure. any other message you want to leave to this interview no I guess not but mm. it, like I said it, it's just so nice to for the Korean government to benefit us so, you know. That's very nice of you to say. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.